Hey everybody, welcome to my shop. Well hello everyone, it is Tom here, back in the shop for another project. That means another video for you guys. <laughs> but uh, first off I want to say hey, uh, you know, thanks for the support. The channel is growing. We, uh, we hit over a thousand subscribers. Uh, about a month ago probably when this video posts so that's just awesome you know we had the thousand subscriber giveaway and um, Ron Straub over there at uh, Flathead Ron's Garage he has a YouTube channel go check him out he was the winner so uh, congratulations again to you Ron and um, thanks to all my new subscribers for uh, finding the channel and hitting that red subscribe button I really appreciate it and of course as always you know thanks to all my old subscribers you know, you guys have uh, been with me since day one, and I appreciate that also. So, uh, let me get the camera turned around and show you what we've got for uh, this video and this project. So, if you guys can see that fairly well, <clears throat> what we've got is a uh, couple hubs. The, of course, the dog's going to bark. <laughs> we uh, need to uh, re-drill a different bolt pattern. So I don't know if you can kind of see it or not. He kind of sharpied about what it's going to be. So these are, um, as I understand it, 1961 Ford F100 hubs. So I'm assuming these are front hubs. And uh, he's got a 56 Pontiac gasser. And he wants these to fit on the... Uh, I'm sorry, yeah, 56 Pontiac. So he wants it to fit on these. And um, obviously, I guess the rear axle is different than the front. He may have done a conversion on the front. That's why he's running these. I'm not sure. But anyway, so we need to do a five by four and a half hole pattern. I think these are currently like five by five or something. So fairly simple. We'll uh, get these over to the uh, mill get the rotary table set up and uh, we'll, we'll indicate off this inner board because that's machine surface there because that's where the race is driven in and um, we'll just uh, you know drill a hole and rotate the table and drill another hole and then we do that uh, five times and then we'll switch over and do this one so easy job should be able to knock it out fairly fast and get it back to the customer so let's get the camera moved over to the mill and get started Gonna go handheld, but here's the setup. Got uh, the rotary table all bolted down. Got the hub in here. Got the uh, inner race cleaned up. Might be getting a little bit washed out, extra light. I'll cut the light off in a second. And got the coax in here. Let's see, let's turn these lights off. See if it's a little bit better. There you go. See if I can hold it. So it seems like uh, it's a, just a smidge and egg shaped. As you rotate around, we're uh, about, uh, what, 21 and a half. Uh, we're at 22, back to 21 and a half. And right here, about 21 and a half. So we're off a couple tents. I've been chasing them, but that should be good. So we'll go from there. You know, of course, we could have just uh, punched in some coordinates with the DRO and, and done it that way, but... I enjoy using the rotary table you know if you're gonna spend the money to buy one you might as well use it so that's why I went this route so let, uh, let me get the coax out and we'll uh, get a center drill in and um, we'll center drill and I don't know I may step drill just make sure it doesn't walk we need to get as close to uh, 0.475 as possible so that takes us over to um, do, 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 like a 15, 30 seconds. That'll give us 0.468. So if the drill bit walks just a smidge, and then, um, you know, we should be about right on there. So let me get that set up, and uh, we'll drill our hole. Well, we're all set up, ready to drill. And I was just checking clearances. The uh, drill chuck will clear the end of that hub so we can get the center drill done. The only problem is... Here's the 15 30 second drill bit. So it ain't gonna fit. I do not believe. 
So we got uh, two options. Um, I don't have a 15 30 second collet. So either I can order a 15 30 second collet, and that would obviously put it way up here. We have plenty of clearance. Or um, you can see if they make a 15 30 seconds uh, quality stubby drill. So this is when the uh, riser block for the mill would come in handy, but I don't have one for this mill. So this is as far as the table goes. And we've run out of real estate. So let me get on the internet, see what I can find, get some ordered. And uh, once it comes in, we'll be back, guys. He's getting bigger. <laughs> He's almost uh, 40 pounds. He's no longer a puppy. He's a small dog. Just cleaned out his pool, putting some cold water in it. It's going to be another like 94 degree day, so... He's going to enjoy the pool. <laughs> Boy, does he love some water. What is it? Get it, Chaos? What's that right there, huh? What's that right there? Mmm, cold water. Well, the mailman just came and my stubby 15 30 second drill bit is here. So we can uh, now drill some holes. And we got a five by four and a half hole pattern we gotta do. Doing it on the rotary table. So 360 degrees divided by five gives us uh, 72 degrees. So I'm gonna start at zero then go to 72 144 216 and 288 let me get some light here if you can see it we are set on zero there on the wheel and there's zero zero on our numbers so we're zeroed up i'll go ahead and lock the table we'll get the, the uh, uh drill bit ready and we'll go ahead and Get us some holes, so let me get you guys in position. Probably cast, but I'll do a little lube anyways. and the drill and then we'll rotate instead of just spotting them all and having to come back. I think it'd be easier. So excuse my big hand. New drill bit, but looking at the chips, I don't think both flutes are cutting on edges. Not exactly at the angle it's supposed to be. 
All right, let me clean this off. We'll get a gauge pin and see if uh, this hole is true or if it, uh, you know, it's a little bit big. So this is a 472 gauge pin, and she'll go in. Obviously, there's a burr down the bottom, so it's not allowing it to go all the way through the hole. And of course, I can't get to it once I pull the hubs out, and I'll uh, deburr the bottom hole there. This is 473. It wants to start, so that's good. We're about close to the nominal size that he needed, so this will work good. But the uh, drill bit did obviously drill the hole larger by uh, you know almost four thousand, so two thousand one direction. Let me uh, rotate around, get set up, and we'll do another hole. Unlock the table. Needs seventy-two degrees. Seventy-two. Lock the table back. And rinse and repeat. One hub is done. That was the last hole. I'll go ahead and do the other one off camera and then um, I'll bring you guys back when I just go ahead and uh, you know, use a Noga burr. We'll just chamfer the holes that way and uh, this project will be done. Okay guys, uh, how about if I film with a <laughs> clean lens? So I guess the oil splattered on it. I didn't realize it. I just checked the viewfinder when I was turning it off on that previous clip and it was all cloudy so yeah anyways that was the uh the last hole so here's a quick look at her i'll get it cleaned up get out of here and do the other one off camera so i'm just running a no good deburring tool cleaning up the holes this is the last one this is all i'm doing getting her nice all right let me get you turned around so um if you notice there's two different style of hubs this one's not bad we got enough clearance here for the wheel or should i say the rim this one <laughs> you know not so much so i called the customer and let them know because also we are now in this radius here and also the new hole is in this step so you know the back of the stud would sit here it wouldn't sit flat so I asked him you know if he wanted me to mill these flat a nice pocket um, but then when I presented him with this issue he's not even sure the wheel is going to fit so we may um, have a new problem on our hands we're not sure yet I'm waiting for him to get back with me <clears throat> He may want me to do that. He may scrap them. He may be try to find another one of these styles. I'm not yet sure yet. So we're in Wimbo. Um, so I'll uh, bring you guys back once I know something. Well, I've been on the phone with the customer. And this one will probably fit. I think we're good here. This one will not. Um... too wide down here so at this current state the hub is no no value to them right now so we figured we'll go ahead and turn it down and see if that works if it does great 
If it doesn't, well, oh well, we're, we're not any loss because we're already in it. So um, to get clearance so his uh, rim will fit, we need to go uh, three inches, 315 thou. So basically, hopefully you guys can see that. We're gonna chuck it up in the lathe and basically just take this into about right there where the transition starts. Because we are, uh, on this one I think we're at, uh, yeah, three inches, 575 thou and he needs it three inches 225 thou and I figure I'd go in an extra five just to make sure that his rim is totally concentric in case it's not that way it'll fit and it will clear so that's the game plan let me see if I can get this thing uh, chucked up and we'll just uh, take a little metal off so I got it chucked up in the four jaw got it indicated in face is good and probably getting washed out. Let me see here. Uh, what's that? A few tents. Not bad for this old hub. I'm happy with it. So let me uh, get you positioned. Put up the indicator. And then we'll do is we're just going to cut down that, I guess, basically shoulder where, you know, this. The two uh, flanges meet. We have to take up um, about a couple hundred thou, so about a th hundred thou going in or so. I don't know if you guys can see that, but the bore is running nice and true. Casting's kind of out of whack. This is the one that was cast iron. The second one I did, the first one was cast steel. Touch off here. We got a cast iron insert in. Alright, uh, kissing there. Change inserts to this profile. See that chatter I'm getting. Let me try that. Let me just go to another insert. Hang on, guys. See how this one works. Still got some harmonics in that, doesn't it? Taking uh, 40,000, going in 20,000 20, depth of cut for total 40 here. Just going to clean up and then I'll get a caliper on it. Don't think I can get too aggressive with it.
see you can see what's what we got going on here I got my new shars eight inch dial says these jaws are a little bit longer than the uh, six inch enable me to be able to get around this hub all right so we're at uh three inches 568 so it looks like it doesn't mind 15 thou depth of cut for a total of 30 right now it doesn't sing like it was when I was doing 20 thou so we may just have to take these little baby steps here Okay, I'm gonna whittle away and I'll bring you guys back. Well, we should be close. Been whittling away. Let's see if I can get on this thing. Is 227 so we got to go to 215 so we got 12 to take off I'll go in six just take it one pass and uh, we should be good See if we hit our mark. Like I said, I'm just giving them extra ten thou to have some room in case his rim is not perfect. It looks like we're all back there. Sweet. We're uh, <laughs> we're at two sixteen. I'll take that. That'll be all right. That'll work. Okay, so this is done. It gives them enough room now to put the uh, rim on there. And obviously we still got plenty of meat, so it still should be strong enough. So hopefully this will work for them. I'll just uh, box it up, ship it out tomorrow. So uh, I'll say again, thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, hit that red subscribe button down there. I'd really appreciate it. You can also hit that bell for notifications so you know when the next video comes out. And uh, with that, we'll see you in the next project. Take care.